relatively simple. Once we have that data in here, what I want to do is I want to be able to select on one of those and have that data load in here. I want to load in the members and I want to update this family tree. That's what we're going to get into right now. Okay, so that's the macro that runs that you just saw called family tree refresh. So what we want to do is the first thing we want to do when we refresh is notice we've got a ton of shapes. Remember, these are all shapes here. So we need to remove those. And I also want to remove all of these shapes. So I want to basically, with the macro, I want to just take all these shapes here and remove them. Right? So if I delete them, right, they're not, they're just temporary. So even all these shapes and all these shapes are all just temporary. Okay. So how do we remove them? Well, all we need to do is just run and loop. Right? So that they're easily going to come back. If I just look on fetters, it's going to come right back. So you see that it's right back to all of them. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we're going to run a loop. We're going to run a loop. We're going to This is number one, two, three, all the way through 16, right? So this is, notice this is member detail five, five being for the row, and 16 for the number. Now, of course, the second row only has eight, so the last one would be four, eight, right? Member picture, information so that's what we're going to do inside the loop we're going to focus on this family tree we're going to remove all the existing members and also we need to remove the connectors these are the connectors these are all dynamic these are called member connector mother three two member connector father three two and so on and so forth okay so that's what i want to do first so we can do that with of course the loop as i mentioned so first thing we're going to do is i need to actually make sure that we have a shape that we're going to focus on so member shape a shape we've already defined this member shape as a shape that's what we're going to do so i want to clear the contents of the selected row we've got a selected row here that's also going to be conditional from it if i select here or here here we're going to use conditional formatting partially partially not the, not the font but we are going to use the background of that okay it's just telling me that i can't drag it back, which is so we're going to use partially, but I still want to So I want to clear that out, right? We don't need any selected members. I also want to know there's a few icons that we're going to be using. We're going to use an edit member button, and we're going to use a clear member button. The edit member button looks just like this right here. It's going to allow us to edit those members. So it's called edit member button. And the reason it has not come up is button here allows us to clear the existing member file. I clear the member I just click on here and it clears the member and it replaces with the default mail picture. If I want to add 
add him back again. I just select him and then I drag and drop him right up inside the place that it's automatically added here. Okay, great. So we understand that. So I want to make sure we are hiding those icons. I don't want to delete those icons. So we're going to reuse them. So that's very, very important. Let's scroll back up to right where we were. So these two buttons, the edit and the clear, both get hidden using visible MSO false. Now we're ready for the delete. So basically I want to delete because they get recreated each time our family tree is refreshed. We want to actually delete them. Okay. If there's an error, we want to skip it. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to look through every single shape inside the sheet, the family tree shapes. For each shape inside that, I want to check if it fits a specific name that we need. For example, using the we're going to look at the name of that sheet. If it contains whatever name of that sheet, it's found in this box. group is simply that group on the on the column here this group right here right here is called member group 7 8 or member group 8 or whatever so member group i also want to delete these because these are all also going to get recreated based on all the members inside that family so we can do that here member group so we're going to delete all that that's going to basically clear that out okay so when i run this macro and i just I'm, i've tied this macro just to this icon just for the fun of it so when I run this macro, you see everything is cleared out, right? That's a nice way of it. So, so everything is cleared out. All the members, notice that there's no members, there's no data in the sense. Okay? There's nothing here, right? except for this brief here. That's just the so everything else got cleared out. First thing what I want to do is I want to set the initial end number. What is that? The end number. Well, the end numbers here, our first row, five, is going to have 16. Remember, there's 16 members of that family in that top row of our great great grandfathers, right? Probably just so we would have our sibling or, or just us, our parents, our grandparents, our great great grandparents, and then our great 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 grandparents. So something like that, right? We, we covered them. So that's how we're going to do this. So this is row five. Five, right so what I, I know that there's 16 members in this first row so i want to set the 16 because i'm going to have to loop through all 16 and add these shapes now the first thing what i want to do in a single macro is i want to actually create these shapes then what i want to do is load the family so if i stop that here right and i run this then what this is going to do is just set up our default pictures so you see you see that so this is the default female male female male our parents each of the sets of parents here then we have two sets of below. So we have 16 members. Eight here, four here, two here. So we start at the This map will actually Okay, so we're starting to get number 16. That's where it works. This is our end number. How far do we go? This number will go from 16 to 8. To four to two and then to one so it'll keep cutting it out i want to set that initial top position where do we place that first one i'm going to set that initial top position right around g3 right row three is where i want to set that first one so we're going to set the top position this particular variable is a double variable so top position and left position are both double they can be decimals all right, continuing on, what I also want to do is I want to set the left position. That left position is also going to be based on the left of G3. G3 is the cells are starting point. So we're setting those initial rows. And I also want to set the initial row number. I can get a little bit closer, but I want to know what row is. Keep that in mind. It's going to be those two ways. Member rows five, four, three, two, one. Because we're going to go from top to bottom. And so we want to keep track of that member row. Remember, I need to know the member row. That's very important because our member row is right here. Five. That five is our initial. The next row over is going to be four and so on and so on. That's the member row. Then we have our 
number number row, which is either one, two, three, all the way to 16, okay, for our first one. So we need to keep track of those. So our member row is gonna go from five to one, and we're gonna step negative one. So it's gonna set a loop for the rows from the top to the bottom. That's where we're going down, okay? Also, I wanna keep track of our member numbers. Remember, on our first row, it's one through 16. On our second row is one through eight, one through four, one through two, and then just one. So it's four our member row equals one to the end number. Now our end number is dynamic. It starts at 16, then it goes to eight, and so on and so forth, okay? So, we're going to create that from one. That's going to be just how we set up our member row and our member number. The first thing what I want to do is I want to create a Now, I'm going to start out with two. Let's just start with one. So, what I want to do is I want to start out with two. That's a female icon. So, I'm going to have to have two icons for that. So, I've got that right here. I've got a female icon called default female. And I've got a icon called default mail. So I'd like to alternate them. And I want to make sure. So I know that if we're on one, right? One or any odd one. One, three, five, seven, nine. Odd, it's going to be female. Even is going to be male. So that's going to help us know whether we're adding a female or male. Because we do want to alternate them. To do that, we're going to check, right? If the member number, member number meaning one, two, three, four, whatever it is. The mod of two equals one, right? Then we're going to default as female. We're going to set that female here. That's what I want. One, because I want a female. I want one, three, five. So if we have a remainder of one, that means I'm never going to be And the member number member row and the member number that's how we get this five underscore one or five underscore two or five underscore three right so that's how we get that name i want a very unique name for every single one i want to keep keep track and keep it organized else we're going to use the default mail here so in that case the shape because it's even let's just call this even this is our odd row so default mail is even now we're going to take that default mail duplicate it create a memory picture so everything's going to be the same remember this is very important we want to make sure that both men and women are have the same exact name all other than the member row and member different will be unique so now what we can do is now regardless of what it now we've duplicated it so regardless of whether it is the default female or default male, we are going to position regardless, right? Now the position is going to be focused on, we're focused on this shape, that brand new shape that we just duplicated and It has the member row, underscore, member number. We are going to set the left position. And see here's the left position. I don't want it exactly. Here's our left position. position as the top exactly as the top position okay so all that's going to do is going to position that first one all right now what we'll do is we're ready for the member detail shape member detail shape now i have a sample shape here called the member detail sample that one we're going to duplicate and we're going to position and we're also going to give it a very specific name called member detail and then we're going to give it that specific uh, of course row number and we're going to give it that member number so first thing we're going to do, member detail sample, we're going to duplicate it. We're going to give it a very unique and specific name called member detail, member row, and we're going to give it that member number with a separate number. We're going to work with it because now we've created it, but we certainly need to position it. Working with it, we're going to get that left position, left position, left position, And then what I want to do is I want to get rid of the top position. Where that top position should be directly this one so what we're going to do is we're going to say it's going to be that top position plus we're going to add to that what is the height of that member picture right it's going to be the height of that member picture plus the top that's going to put it directly under that's exactly what i want i also want to set the width of that i want to set the width based on our columns here that's going to be very helpful because that way if we decide to expand our columns we can also expand them but i want it just under that i don't want it exactly equal to 
the width of that car. I want it slightly under, and I also want it centered here, so slightly under and center. So we can do that here. The width is simply going to be the family tree. We'll just can use G1 as the width, and we can use probably another one, but G1's fine because they're all the same. Minus six, so that's going to set the width a little bit less than the actual width of that car. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, great. So now what we've done is we've created this picture, and we've created this shape. Now what I want to do is I want to add the done the picture, set the new number shape. So now we need to create the for metal. Once we get to the second row, that's the time to create the That connector is specifically to the first spot of the number picture. Now connectors, when we add connectors, I've got a sample connector here. Right here, all I'm going to do is take this connector called Sample Connector. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to give it a very specific name, and then I'm going to give it a very specific beginning and end connector. What do I want to do? Well, I want to set it the beginning connect at this point right here. Now, if we zoom in a little bit here, we're going to see the connection points. Where is the beginning connect? The beginning connect is going to be right here on this shape. This is going to be position one. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I want it on position one. On the end connect, where do I want to connect? I want to connect it here. No, this is position one. This is position two. This is position three. This is position four. So I want to The second one I want is father, okay? Because I need two, right? I need this one to connect to the mother, and I need this one to connect to the father. So I need two. So the first one, the mother, right? The mother, we're going to connect to that. We're going to focus.